live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. On Sunday, the Philadelphia Eagles did what seemed like it was going to be impossible just two months ago. After a 2-5 start where they looked dead in the water, had the second-worst record in the entire NFC, and looked like one of the worst teams in football, they completely turned their season around. They proceeded to win seven of their next nine games, including a four-game winning streak over their last four games, and are now sitting at 9-7 heading into their final game of the year against the Dallas Cowboys. And with their win over the Washington football team in Week 17, combined with a loss by the Minnesota Vikings to the Green Bay Packers, the Eagles clinched a playoff spot. Truly remarkable, and Eagles players and fans are happy, and rightfully so, that they'll be playing some late January football. But now, imagine that the NFL came out today and said, wait a second, what are you talking about? You haven't clinched a playoff spot yet. That playoff scenario that you thought would clinch you a spot and that we told you would have mathematically gotten you in was completely wrong. You're not in the playoffs yet. An oversight that big seems hard to believe, and rightfully so. Something like that seems like it would be impossible to have happen, especially when officials are telling you that you're in and that you've clinched a spot. But amazingly enough, that actually happened once. In 1982, the Pittsburgh Steelers thought that they had clinched a playoff spot, only to realize that they hadn't. And this is the story behind one of the strangest playoff scenarios in the history of the NFL. Before I talk about the scenario in question, we need some context to understand the structure of the league at the time, as well as the team that was fighting for the spot that they thought they had wrapped up but actually didn't. The year is 1982, and the NFL is in a state of turmoil. After two weeks, the players went on strike for 57 days. I'm not going to dive too much into the weeds of the strike, partly because it's a complex issue that would take the video in a completely different direction, and partly because I talked about it a lot in a previous video of mine, when I talked about the time that legendary broadcasters Pat Summerall and John Madden called a Division III football game to fill CBS's programming block during the strike. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But with the strike, it was the first time in the history of the NFL that regular season games were cancelled. Eventually, the strike ended on the night of November 16, 1982 when the players and owners came together on a five-year collective bargaining agreement. And with that, the season resumed. For long-starving football fans, that was the good news. The bad news? Well, this season was going to look completely different. Instead of playing 16 games, it would be the shortest season yet, with just nine games played. Instead of having your typical division alignment with the East, Central, and West in each conference, there would be no divisions. The divisions would be tossed out the window in favor of just the AFC and the NFC since divisions don't make any sense since because of the schedule, some teams wouldn't even be playing teams of their own division, as was the case, for example, with the Kansas City Chiefs, who never played a game against the Seattle Seahawks in 1982, even though both teams were in the AFC West. And the playoff format? Well, it was going to be radically different. Instead of five teams in each conference making it into the postseason, this was going to be the largest field yet, by a lot. Of the 28 teams in the league, a whopping 16 of them, or 57% of the field, would be playing playoff football. This was the first and only time ever that 50% of the teams or more made it into the postseason. The teams would be seeded in each conference 1-8, through eight, and the playoffs wouldn't even be known as the playoffs, as this one-time format was called the Super Bowl Tournament. Everything about this newly restarted 1982 season seemed weird and bizarre, and especially with this playoff format and the Super Bowl Tournament, we were about to get wild and crazy. And as we were about to find out, it was going to create playoff scenarios that seemed almost impossible to believe. Through the first three weeks of the 1982 season, there were few teams in football that looked as good as this team right here. Before the strike, the Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Dallas Cowboys on the road by two possessions on national television on Monday Night Football. Then they followed that up with a home win against the Cincinnati Bengals in overtime. If you want to learn more about the crazy finish to that game, where the Steelers won on a play that neither Chuck Noll nor Terry Bradshaw wanted to call, click the card in the upper right corner. Even though the Steelers took two months off because of the strike, it seemed like when play resumed, they were picking up right where they left off. As in their first game back, they went into the Astrodome to take on the Houston Oilers, and they won it 24-10. Things seemed like they were going swimmingly. They were 3-0, being one of just three undefeated teams in the AFC. Their point differential of plus 28 was the third best in the conference, only behind the New York Jets at plus 44, and the Los Angeles Raiders at plus 34. The offense was firing on all cylinders, with Terry Bradshaw being a legitimate MVP candidate. The Steelers had scored 86 points, which was the fourth most in all of football. And after two straight seasons where they didn't make the playoffs, and where there was talk that the dynasty was finally coming to an end, and their decade-long reign of dominance was over, the Steelers were proving to their doubters that any talk of this was premature, and that they were still one of the teams to beat in the AFC. That was the good news. 
The bad news was that over their next four games heading into the game that's the focus of our story, the Steelers were sliding big time, dropping three of their four games. Their offense that was so dominant and had Terry Bradshaw as the favorite for the MVP was sinking faster than the Titanic. They got shut out in a loss to the Seattle Seahawks, they put up just nine points in a loss to the Cleveland Browns, and perhaps most infamously, they got shut out by the Buffalo Bills in a game where they mustered up six first downs and had negative two passing yards, which is still somehow more than the New York Giants put up on Sunday against the Chicago Bears. You'll learn more about that game, which Terry Bradshaw called the worst of his career by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Still, even though the Steelers were picking a pretty bad time to play their worst and sloppiest football of the season, their odds of making it into the playoffs were still pretty good, especially an expanded 16-team field like this one. In fact, they were so good that entering the penultimate week of the season, according to league officials, they could clinch a spot. Here's the breakdown of what had to happen for Pittsburgh to get into the playoffs. It was not complicated and was incredibly straightforward and feasible. The Steelers had to beat the Patriots, and they needed a loss by either the Cleveland Browns or the Seattle Seahawks. As long as Pittsburgh took care of business at home, as long as either one of those two teams fell, then for the first time since 1979, the Steelers would be playing playoff football and would have clinched a spot in the first and hopefully only edition of the Super Bowl tournament. Seems pretty simple, right? The bad news for the Steelers was that the Browns did not help them out at all. They played the Houston Oilers in Week 8, and went on the road to win that one 20-14. It looked like Cleveland was in trouble against one of the worst teams in football, as the Oilers, despite being 1-6 and having nothing to play for, led it 14-10 after three quarters. However, the Browns scored 10 straight in the fourth to come back and prevail. The good news for the Steelers, however, was that all they needed was one of those two teams to lose. And fortunately for them, that's exactly what happened, as the Cincinnati Bengals were in complete control when they defeated the Seattle Seahawks 24-10, also scoring 10 straight in the fourth to put the game out of reach. Cincinnati took care of business. Both of these games were taking place simultaneously at the time that the Steelers were playing the Patriots, but the stakes were now abundantly clear. On December 26, 1982, when the New England Patriots traveled to Three Rivers Stadium to take on the Steelers, to say that this game was massive would be an understatement. Based off of the results of Sunday's games, and based off of everything that league officials were telling the Steelers, because of Seattle's loss to Cincinnati, so long as the Steelers beat the Patriots to break out of their slump, the Steelers would be playing postseason football. And with the stakes at their highest, and the pressure at its highest point all season, the Steelers rose to the occasion and played their best football of the entire 1982 campaign. Call it a bloodbath. Call it a butt-kicking. Call it a demolition. Call it whatever you want, but the Steelers completely destroyed the Patriots on this day. This was a get-right game for the Steelers in every sense of the word. Pittsburgh set the tone right from the start when they forced the Patriots to go 3 and out, and then drove down the field on their first drive before rookie kicker Gary Anderson hit a chip-shot field goal from 21 yards out to get Pittsburgh a 3-0 lead early in the first quarter. As a side note, to learn more about Anderson's legendary career, as well as his somewhat rocky relationship with head coach Chuck Knoll, click the card in the upper right corner. After the Steelers forced another 3-and-out, the Steelers once again drove down the field, and this time, they were able to punch it into the end zone, when Frank Pollard ran it in from a yard out to make it a 10-0 ball game. Then the Steelers forced another 3-and-out, and once again drove down the field to find the end zone. This time, they did it through the air, as Terry Bradshaw hit John Stallworth on a slant route to make it a 17-0 game. For some perspective, by the time the Patriots got their first first down of the game, the Steelers were already up 20-0. From there, if it wasn't already, the route was on. Pittsburgh was up by three possessions before the Patriots even mustered up a first down. The Steelers led it 20-0 at the half, while the Pats had four first downs in nine minutes of possession. Then the Steelers scored 17 points in the fourth quarter, and won it convincingly by a final score of 37-14, with the 23-point margin of victory being their highest margin of the year. Everything from a statistical standpoint about this game was pure domination. The Steelers doubled the number of first downs that the Patriots had, beating them 28-14 in this category. Pittsburgh had 212 rushing yards and over 4 yards per carry, to just 48 rushing yards for New England on just over 3 yards per carry. The Steelers had 494 yards of total offense, which was their highest output of the season at the time. Terry Bradshaw kept his jersey clean the entire game, never getting sacked, completing over 62% of his passes, and finishing with 2 touchdown passes and no interceptions, while posting a passer rating of 122.8. And after the game, the Steelers were celebrating. Not just because they won, but because this win, combined with Seattle's loss to Cincinnati, according to league officials, clinched them a playoff spot. All the press releases put out by the Steelers said so, and after the game, a ton of reporters were asking questions, and understandably and rightfully so, about what this win meant and how it felt to get back into the playoffs. There was just one small teeny tiny problem. Everything I just said was a lie. The Steelers hadn't actually clinched a playoff spot yet. 
That's right. The Steelers and the whole country thought that the Steelers with this win in Seattle's loss to Cincinnati officially put Pittsburgh in the playoffs. But after the game, and well after the reporters met with the players, league officials informed the Steelers that they screwed up. The Steelers were not in the playoffs yet, and there was still a scenario where they would be left out of the Super Bowl tournament. Here's how this insane bit of chaos and how this nonsense could have kept the Steelers out, even when everyone thought that they were in no matter what happened. Suppose the Steelers lost the following week against the Cleveland Browns. The Steelers would finish the season with a 5-4 record. Miami had two games left. They had a game against the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football, and a game against the Baltimore Colts to close out the season. Suppose Miami lost both of those games. It seemed unlikely, since Miami was 5-2 and when the Colts were winless, but it could happen. The Dolphins would be 5-4. and four. Buffalo had two games left, with that aforementioned Monday Night Football game against Miami, and then a regular season finale against the Patriots. If Buffalo won that game against Miami and lost the game against New England, they'd be 5-4. and four. In this scenario, New England would also be 5-4, and four, and Cleveland would be 5-4 and four since they defeated Pittsburgh. All it took was four results for this to occur. Cleveland beating Pittsburgh, Buffalo beating Miami, New England beating Buffalo, and Baltimore beating Miami. It's unlikely, but four results are not out of the realm of possibility. Heck, in 2006, the Kansas City Chiefs needed four things to happen to get into the playoffs, and all four of those things happened. In 1980, the New England Patriots needed five things to happen to keep them out of the playoffs, and all five of those things happened. You can learn more about that and how unlucky they were by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Here, you would have had Miami, Cleveland, Buffalo, New England, and Pittsburgh all finishing with a 5-4 record. If all five of these teams finished at a 5-4, the first tiebreaker would be winning percentage within the conference. The Los Angeles Raiders, New York Jets, Cincinnati Bengals, and San Diego Chargers had already clinched a playoff spot by this point, so you'd have these five teams vying for four spots. And in this scenario, the Steelers, amazingly enough, would be left out. How did the Steelers get left out here? Well, making things more complicated with this tiebreaker of winning percentage in the conference is that the schedule was completely unbalanced. Because the league did not change the schedule based off of what games got cancelled, and just decided to keep the original schedule without making up the games that got called off, each team was playing an uneven number of conference games. Buffalo played just six of their nine games against the AFC that year, while Pittsburgh played eight. And in this scenario, Cleveland at 5-2 of the conference would be the number 5 seed. Buffalo at 4-2 would be the number 6 seed. New England at 5-3 would be the number 7 seed, and Miami at 4-3 would be the number 8 seed. Pittsburgh's record in the conference, if this happened, would be 4-4, four and four, as they'd be the only team among the five in the tiebreaker to not be above 500 within the AFC. Because of this, they would be on the outside looking in, and would not be in the postseason. Now you're probably thinking to yourself how the heck such an oversight could happen. How could you have the NFL not know its own playoff rules and scenarios, tell everyone that the Steelers would be in the playoffs with a win and a loss by Seattle, and let press releases and articles get put out detailing this, only for the league to come back later that day and say, never mind, that's not true. Well, the answer is quite simple. The league had no idea what it was doing. The Steelers were not the only team completely confused by this. The Philadelphia Eagles thought after the Chicago Bears beat the Los Angeles Rams that the Eagles were completely eliminated from the playoffs. The league said that was not the case, and there was still a scenario where they could get in. After the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated the Detroit Lions, Bucks officials were confused as to whether or not they were officially in, and they had to contact the league office, only to find out that they had not clinched a spot yet. And the Minnesota Vikings, after losing to the New York Jets, had left the locker room disappointed and dejected that they hadn't clinched a playoff spot yet, only for league officials to contact them and tell them that yes, in fact, they were in the playoffs. When I say that the 1982 season was a truly bizarre one, I mean it in every sense of the word. For a large chunk of it, I'm not sure how much of it even felt like NFL football. You had regionally televised playoff games. You had teams with losing records make the playoffs. You had a kicker winning the MVP for crying out loud. And then you had this incredibly strange incident where the Steelers thought that they were in the playoffs according to the rules and scenarios that the NFL put out, but were not actually in the playoffs. Talk about an emotional letdown. So with all that craziness in mind, that raises one final all-important question. After all of that, and after that fake tease, did the Steelers wind up making it to the playoffs that year? Fortunately for them, their playoff fate wasn't hanging in the balance for too much longer. On Monday night, the Buffalo Bills play the Miami Dolphins in a big nationally televised game. Remember that four things had to happen for the Steelers to miss out on a spot in the playoffs. And the first one was Buffalo beating Miami, going into the Orange Bowl, and walking away with a victory. That did not happen. The Dolphins won this game pretty handily as after Buffalo jumped out to a 10-0 lead in the first quarter, scoring on each of their first two possessions, Miami finished the game scoring the final 27 points, defeating the Bills by a final score of 27-10. to 
Even though Dolphins quarterback David Woodley went just 7 for 18 with 88 yards passing, no touchdowns, one interception, and a pass rating of 31.7, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play, and even though the Dolphins turned it over three times, they still won by three possessions, winning it fairly convincingly and pulling away in the second half. This meant that Pittsburgh was now officially in the postseason. Take two. 24 hours later, it was safe to celebrate now. And the funny part is that at the end of the day, only one of the four things that had to happen for the Steelers to miss the postseason wound up materializing. Pittsburgh took care of business against Cleveland in Week 17, winning it by a final score of 37-21. And Miami, to the surprise of no one, beat a winless Colts team by a final score of 34-7. Pittsburgh still would have made the postseason, even if their fate was decided a little bit later than they initially thought it would be. Pittsburgh would even be in a spot to host the playoff game, although they infamously lost 31-28 to the San Diego Chargers in the first round after blowing a 28-17 lead in the fourth quarter. Today, the odds that we see anything like this again are slim to none, and I feel fairly confident in saying that. With how many computers we have, with the power of playoff machines and simulators, and with how many people are in the league office whose job it is to calculate playoff scenarios, we're not going to see a scenario where a team thinks that they clinched a playoff spot, only for the league to step in and say that they messed up and that this was completely wrong. But 40 years ago, this was not the case. Because on December 26, 1982, amazingly enough, in a situation that truly highlights the ridiculousness and craziness of the 1982 strike shortened season, the Pittsburgh Steelers both made and missed the playoffs at the same exact time. Get your official Jaguar Gamer 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes, link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jargator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.